What one area, above all else, would be your unique focus while in office? I think for me, my uh, biggest focus is going to be placing an emphasis on uh, youth services. Um, I commend Wingate Newton, say what you want to say about him, uh, but I think Le Wingate led the fight sort of single-handedly during mm -hmm. his time on council uh, when it came to focusing on our, our youth's needs. You know, we uh, allotted a little over $350,000 in the cumulative budget for 2018. That's what, what's left over from the revenue in 2017. You know, that's a lot, but it's not enough. When you have so many families in South St. Pete that live below the poverty line, mm -hmm. I don't think putting $350,000 towards youth summer jobs is enough. Mm -hmm. We need year-round employment for our youth because some of these kids, they're helping mom or dad or grandma or auntie make ends meet. And it's great being able to have opportunities. That's what we run for office for, is to create opportunities, not just for our constituents, but for youth as well. And for me being a young person, I think what I bring to this um, election, because that's what it is, is we're running to, uh, to replace Carl Nurse. I think what I bring to this election is I bring a youthful voice, a youthful perspective. I bring youthful relevance. Um, it's one thing to have someone who's outside of your age group speaking to the needs of that specific community or that specific age demographic. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to address those needs. Kids are looking for apprenticeships. They're looking for more vocational and technical programs. They're looking for opportunities to have apprenticeships. I want to partner with both the for-profit and the non-for-profit to make sure that those opportunities opportunities are there for our youth so that they can see that they do have a future here in St. Pete. Okay. What specific one policy, program, or investment would you champion and try to get done in your first year? I think I want to focus on bringing City Hall to the people. I don't know how I would put that in one ordinance or how I would make it make one motion uh, to do that, but I really want to focus on constituent services, and that means bringing local government to the people. So I would love to see more city council meetings take place within the community, uh, specifically South St. Pete. You got a lot of folks who can't get to City Hall, don't know where City Hall is. So I would love to see local government go back into the community. One of the things that I'm most proud of is that I've been plugged in, involved in my community. I've been immersed in the action and the social action. So I want to continue that, and I think that means making sure that Folks have an opportunity to connect to those who, they're, who, who they elected to serve. And uh, I would like to make sure that we also use mainstream media and technology to do that. Uh, utilizing social media especially to bring government to the people. Uh, give options, you know. Uh, find out what works for them. A lot of times we have politicians making all the decisions. Political bureaucrats, you know, uh, setting the laws that we have to live by. I would love to see more community consensus uh, in that effort. I'd love to see more people from our community around the table making those decisions so I would love to focus on engaging our community and what's happening here locally so that's a first term first year project for me. How will you build relationships and bridges between downtown and midtown? We need a bridge builder not a bridge destroyer. We need a bridge builder not a bridge destroyer and that's what I want to be. I want to make sure that we build those connections uh, not just with residents but also with the business community. You know I am running this campaign as if my life depends on it because our life does depend on it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity I think to turn a seat that was cut out for minority representation back into the hands of our community. And so I will use this opportunity to not just represent the black community, but to represent the business community, the LGBT community, uh, the Hispanic community, every community that I think has been disenfranchised. That's the community I want to represent. And that's going to take connecting folks. Uh, I've walked Beach Drive, I've walked 4th Street, and I've talked to business owners. I've walked the Deuces, and I've talked to the Bray Boys and Carla Bristol and Patrick. I found out that there's issues that really relate to each community and we don't realize it. There's more that actually unites us than what divides us. Uh, when we go to talking about issues that affect business, a lot of folks say, hey, we don't have the incentives there for us to want to come to St. Pete. So a lot of businesses don't want to come here. So I want to find out how can we recruit and also retain the businesses that are already here. Mm -hmm. Mom and pop businesses are the bread and butter of, must, of much of St. Pete. So I want to make sure that we're able to feed back into our economic base by supporting them. And so what I'll do is I'll build a consensus around that. I'll make sure that I'm a constant presence in those communities both downtown and in midtown and I want to bring folks together who are the, who are the power players there the the, the community stakeholders mm -hmm. and and find out how can we bridge that divide and it's going to take continuing the dialogue and starting some conversations and, and especially conversations that much of us aren't talking about specifically which is why there's so much of an economic boom in downtown while midtown's 
at a steady standstill. So okay. we got to talk about the problems, and that's what I want to address. Follow up to that. So you say you want to be a bridge builder versus a bridge destroyer. Who are you distinguishing yourself from? Who is a bridge destroyer? I'm distinguishing myself from anyone who does not work well with others. I'm distinguishing myself from anyone who's had a history of of disagreements with our within our community. Does that apply to anybody, any of your opponents? No, anyone who wants to wear the shoe, they can wear it. Okay, gotcha. Which current council member do you respect most and why? Charlie Gertis. I, I, I really, really, really love Charlie Gertis, mm -hmm. and he and I have had many conversations in council chambers. Uh, that's one of the things that I did before I ran for this seat, was I went and I spoke to council members, and I wanted to get an idea. I know how local government works. I've studied it. Uh, I've been involved in the process, uh, but there's some things that we don't see. So I had to go to that council member, or to those council members, to find out what does the job really entail. And uh, one of the things Charlie told me was something that has always resonated with me all my life because I've always wanted to serve or help someone along the way in one capacity or the other. Win, lose, or draw, I've always been willing to put my name out there and, and to jeopardize whatever kind of a private life I have to be of service. And so one thing Charlie said is he said, Corey, you have to remain consistent. And there's two things that you must always carry with you, and that's faith and family. Those are two very concrete uh, ideals that I hold close to my heart, which is faith and family. Mm -hmm. Because if all else fails and the whole world begins to tumble on you, there's two things that remain constant, mm -hmm. and that's faith and family. Mm -hmm. So Charlie taught mm -hmm. me that, and that's one of the things that I'll bring with me to council is that I always keep faith and family close to my heart. Mm -hmm. Which mayoral candidate will you vote for? Um, I'm keeping that to myself for now. I, I'm keeping that to myself. And I, I, I love both Ricks. Uh, I know Miss Carrie and I know Miss Joyce. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think both of them are, are two great guys. Uh, I believe in Mama T. I believe in Anthony. Uh, I believe that we have a great group of candidates this go around. And what I love to see is folks who aren't willing to sit on their patoot uh, and willing to get up and actually, like I said, put their name in the ring and fight for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. Whether you're going to win or whether you're not going to win, whether you got the most money in the bank account or not. You're willing to step out on faith and do what you believe in. So I commend every candidate in this race. And what I would hope is that for that candidate who does not win in the primary, they will get behind the candidate who they support and believe in in, in the general. And so I think there's a lot of dialogue being discussed this election. I think Jesse Neville and uh, Akila Canyon have brought a lot of things to the forefront that we need to continue discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if they don't win and I win, I look forward to working with them to address those issues. But we got to be able to have civil dialogue. And so that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for a private citizen, we understand not sharing who you're voting mm -hmm. for. Somebody told me the other day, it's nobody's business. Okay. <laughs> so we get that. But you're not a private person any longer. I am not. I am not. But, but so my vote is, is still why private. Are you you're not saying who you're voting for as mayor. Is because that a politically safe answer? No, I, I think it's a, a personal answer, Ms. Gypsy, because I believe that who I support and who I bubble in when I go into that booth or sit down at my dining room table to fill out my vote by mail ballot, I believe that's my personal decision. But what I will say is that I have my own primary that I have to focus on. I have my own election that I'm focused on. And it could help me or it could hinder me by supporting either one of those candidates. So I'm focused on winning this election. I'm focused on pulling through my primary and then winning my general. And I would hope that whichever one of those, first of all, the question I want to say is why ain't they supporting me? <laughs> Neither one of them has endorsed me. So I think that's the question. But no, I, I would love to work with whoever. And I think with the, with the attitude that I have and the mindset that I have, I can work with either one of them because that's what you need. Somebody who can work with anybody. And I'm willing to do so as long as we can have a meeting of the minds and be able to agree to disagree. Okay. All right. So we want to do that question that... It's not on my list any longer, but it's still on your list. Oh, okay. Um, the role model question? Yeah. Okay. So who is your political role model, living or deceased, local, national, or even international? What is the biggest financial waste you've identified in city government? Honestly, I'm going to have to say the peer project. Uh, I believe we need a peer. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I do not agree with the ever escalating costs of a peer. Um, I know there's oftentimes that some politicians come into office and before they leave, they put up oaths to themselves around the city. Uh, this happens in every city across the country. What I want to make sure that St. Pete Pier is, is a pier that's dedicated to the people. All my life, and I'm sure anybody who's lived in St. Pete as long as there was a pier, that's where you went. Mm -hmm. You couldn't afford a boat or you couldn't afford to, to dine on the water. You know, Cha Cha Coconuts was a place for every, I think, um, income. 
uh, bracket, but I want to make sure that it's a place for families. Uh, I want to make sure that it's a place that can, that's conducive to not just business, but the local businesses around there. Uh, I'd like to see more minority businesses represented at the pier. Mm -hmm. um, but I do not think that taking TIF fund dollars that are reserved uh, for downtown projects, which I would like to see more affordable housing projects used with that additional money that mm -hmm. we're requesting. But, you know, we, we started it originally at $50 million mm -hmm. and here we are now at almost $67 million. Mm -hmm. And who knows where we'll be after mm -hmm. that. I want to make sure that it's done quickly. We've already started laying down the pilers on it just the other week, but you know, we're going to have a hurricane season here before we know it, you know, so I want to make sure that it's not affected by that. And whatever structure does go up, I do want to make sure that it's weather resistant, mm -hmm. that it can weather whatever storm comes here, because most likely it'll be there for the next 40 to 50 years. So I want to make sure that it's something that's cost effective, one, and uh, user friendly, you know, something that the community can, can utilize. Okay, right. so now we're going to ask you a tough question, okay. so get ready. Okay. I'm going to shift in your seat. Go ahead, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Can't be anything I haven't heard already. Go okay. ahead. So you were president of Pinellas County Black Democratic mm -hmm. Caucus, mm -hmm. yet you supported two non-black candidates over what, who people view as qualified black candidates. Mm -hmm. You supported the opponents uh, of Daryl Roussan. Mm -hmm. Uh, first, Augie. I supported Ribeiro. one opponent of Daryl Okay, ones. and then reported. But some kind of way it, it, it got the, out that I was supporting Ed and Lorraine. And, okay. and, and, and you can talk to Ed yourself, and Ed will tell you that I did never support him. Okay. So. so then let's stick with Augie. Okay. <laughs> so you Thank supported you. Augie mm -hmm. over, over uh, Roussan. Mm -hmm. And then you supported Wenge Newton's opponent mm -hmm. in his over race. Wenge. How, in your capacity as an officer with the Black Democratic Caucus, mm -hmm. do you see fit to support two non-black candidates over qualified black candidates? There's nothing in our bylaws that say we have to support a black candidate. I just want to point that out. And anybody who can show me otherwise, we can have a conversation. Uh, but there was nothing in our bylaws that said that. Uh, that was my position as an individual. That was not my position as president of the Democratic Black Caucus. I never endorsed as the president of the Democratic Black Caucus, but I endorsed as Corey Giddens. And and nobody can tell me who I can support and who I can't support. What I do not support is an elected official who's willing to bully you into supporting them. That's not what's not okay. I don't. I, I need to see substantial results from my community for me to support you. I need to see that you've been involved with working in my community and doing something for my community. If I don't see it, then I'm not going to support you. I did not see it from those individuals. I did not see those individuals willing to build working relationships with our organization, which was at the time the Pinellas County Democratic Black Caucus. It's one thing to come to us because you want an endorsement, but it's another thing to come to us because you're willing to listen to us and have dialogue, not critique and tell us what you think is best. Anyone who was in those meetings, when those individuals came to us to talk to us, will tell you that the response was not welcoming, the response was not warm. And so for me, I, I based my decision around that. Mm -hmm. After you came and spoke to us, what was my takeaway? My takeaway was that you came demanding an endorsement or support from the individual or from the organization, but you did not come willing to have a, a, a constructive dialogue about the issues in our community. So for me, we've got to get out of the days of we're supporting you just because your skin color is the same tone as ours. Mm -hmm. I support the candidate that speaks to the issues that matter most to me. I support the candidate that has a platform that's conducive to what I believe is the best for our city or our district. I did not believe neither one of those candidates were the best choices. Okay, so so your answer seems to have some inconsistencies okay. in it. On the one hand, you say it was your personal decision, mm -hmm. yet you're basing it on your position as officer of the Black Democratic Party. I'm basing it on my meeting when they came to the to us asking for their support. That's what I'm basing it on. I'm also basing it on my past encounters with those individuals. Because in the past, Rusan's campaign was the first campaign I ever worked on. But like I said, I, I still felt like we were stuck in the first mm -hmm. term, but nothing had been done thereafter. Okay. So that that's me personally. And like I said, if who I support uh, has any say over what kind of elected official I'm going to be, I'd like it to be that Corey Givens doesn't see color. Corey Givens sees character. Well, which of those two candidates bullied you or attempted to? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I'd, I'd like you to ask them that. I'd like you to ask them that. Okay. That's my response to that, Miss Gypsy. I would like you to ask them that. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you have any other no. questions? That's it. That's okay. it. Okay. Is we there do. something you're curious about that you wanted to ask about any? We asked the last candidate, and just because you're African American, mm -hmm. we don't want to assume anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Is there anything you're curious about um, the downtown or the midtown community? Yeah. I think uh, I'm curious about the fact that we 
aren't working with our elected officials in Tallahassee or in Washington, D.C. to make sure that there are dollars that are coming back to South St. Pete. You know, the city of St. Pete budgets only stretches but so far. We can only allot so many millions of dollars towards real economic development. So what I would like to see is that we stop voting for candidates just because we voted for them one or two times before, uh, because we recognize their name, but we're voting on them based on their track record, based on what they've done or, or, or who they brought into our community to help us. Uh, we can't sit here waiting on someone on the right horse to ride in to save us. We have to be willing to save ourselves. So what I would like to see is more cohesive dialogue between all of our elected officials. I'd like to see more than just the photo ops. I want to see the real work happening. I want to see more than just the press conferences or the community meetings. I want to see something happen. I'm tired of sitting here and voting for someone just because their name is on the ballot and they expect to win. I want to vote for someone because they've been working the game I support. I want to vote for someone because they've shown me that they're deserving of my my vote. My vote does not go to waste. My vote cannot be bought. My vote is real and it's based on how I feel as an individual. And for someone to tell me that I'm wrong because I vote based on uh, opposite whatever they believe, I don't like it. So I would love to hold our elected officials accountable, Ms. Gypsy, and continue to see more real dialogue towards economic development because we've, we're all, I think we've got so many programs around here that do the same thing. And I just wonder if we put all of our programs together, merge all of our resources, how much good can we do for this community? I think we do a lot of good. You know, I'd love to see all of these churches together coming and actually supporting the Bread of Life Ministries at every church within the community. Imagine how many less homeless people we'd have on the streets. How many people would not be hungry. So I think it takes us coming together as a village and pouring our resources out so that we can help those who are less fortunate. And that's what I want to do. I want to serve as an empathetic leader. I want to serve with my heart and not with my pockets. Okay. And we do have a couple minutes. Let's do you want to address, Corey, the, uh, the assumption in some people's heart that you're a dishonest person because yeah. of the um, misinformation mm -hmm. in the first campaign mm -hmm. and the recent uh, news article mm -hmm. about the $500 deposit yeah. into your personal account. Yes, what would you say to viewers to, uh, to address mm -hmm. those who feel um, that you have a pattern of dishonesty? I'm going to look at the camera and say this. Those who know me, know me. Uh, those who don't know me make assumptions about me. Uh, we all have passed. We've all made mistakes. I owned up to my mistake in 2012. I owned up to my mistake just the other month. Uh, but what I will not do is I will not be blamed for something that I didn't do. Uh, when I made a mistake, I addressed it with the person who was involved, and we took care of it. This was back in January. Unfortunately, that person wanted to hold something over my head and threatened to send it to the press, and this was in June. Uh, it's unfortunate that politics is such a dirty game. But the reason that I'm getting into the political realm is because I want to change the game. We can only be sideline spectators. We've got to stop that. We've got to be willing to put on our helmets and, and get in and face it head on. Uh, so for anyone who asks or questions my integrity or my honesty, I tell them to come and talk to me. I'm not scared to talk to anyone. Anybody who's called me since they've read whatever they've read, I've been more than willing to have the conversation and continue the dialogue. I don't have anything to hide, but one thing I won't be is I won't be immature and I won't carry on back and forth in the press. But I'll be more than willing to talk to you face to face and discuss whatever your concerns may be. But for anyone who questions who Corey Gibbons is, talk to Corey Gibbons and Corey Gibbons will be happy to tell you that. Who is that person, Corey? Which person? That wanted to hold it over your head and take it to the media? Oh, her name was Miss Johnston. What's her first name? Lucinda. Okay. Have you talked with her since then? I have made multiple attempts to reach out to her and to settle whatever dispute. And each time I'm told, uh, I don't want to speak with you. So. What do you think her motivation is? Uh, it's political. I know she's supporting my opponent now. I know my opponent is also a tenant in her son's building. I know that she recruited my former campaign manager to work for my opponent. So oh, who's your, who would you, which Gina opponent? Driscoll. Gina Driscoll. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, gotcha. Yeah. And did you say there's a financial relationship between her and, and Gina Driscoll? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look at the report to find out. So I, I, I don't know. Um, what I do know is that there's a personal relationship there, and this was something that she's told me. Uh, but this all arose because I would not support the candidate that she supports for mayor. 
uh, and I was bullied into supporting him. And when I held my ground and I said I would not support him, what I the mistake that I made back in January, which I paid for, uh, came back to haunt me in June. Uh, and here I am still, once again, discussing it, uh, hoping that we can move forward. And if she's listening to this, I'm still more than willing to give her a certified receipt along with that deposit. But I can't force anyone to accept my money. Uh, I can't force anyone to give me an opportunity to make right my wrong. Uh, but I'm just hoping that we are you know, able to move forward and, and let this go because I, I can't do it by myself. That person has to be willing to receive it. Uh, and when other parties get involved to try to alleviate the situation and it's still not not, you know, we still can't get anywhere. At that point, you have to question whether or not the person is doing it, you know, for the right reasons. Okay. Was it a mistake in, in uh, judgment or was it a just a mistake in deposit? It was a mistake in deposit, for okay. one, for the deposit that I made, but it was a mistake in judgment for trusting the person uh, and believing that we could handle it between us without getting the press involved. Okay. All right. That's it, Corey. All right. That's All right. It. Well, thank y'all so much. Yeah, I appreciate you gave it. Excellent interview.